researchers in Barcelona, Spain, have calculated that the trawling of the ocean floor by fishing fleets releases roughly the same amount of carbon emissions in the water as aviation puts into the atmosphere each year, calling for greater protection of the planet's seas. On March 31st, 2021, the Prime Minister of Japan held the first meeting of the Advisory Council on the promotion of climate change countermeasures at the Prime Minister's office. At the meeting, the participants engaged in discussions on the appointment of a chairperson, the meeting administration, the promotion of climate change countermeasures and other matters. Only recently has the African elephant been officially categorised as two separate species, the savanna and forest elephant. The more easily recognised savanna elephant, Loxodonta africana numbers, are under pressure equally with its smaller cousin, Loxodonta cyclotis. Their numbers are now estimated to be a mere 75% of what they were in the year 2000. Welcome to the Primate News, where today we will be hearing from Amanda Panda with her review on the latest recycling statistics in the land of humans. Amanda will also give you a couple of further helpful hints on other ways to recycle items that you might not have considered. Let's get her on the line. Hello, Professor. Amanda here. Ah, greetings, Amanda. Uh, Big Tick sent me a message that you had both been collating the latest statistics on recycling in the land of humans. Yes, Professor. Hang on. I'll just switch on my screen share facility. Right you are. The most recent global study in the land of humans took place between 2017 and 2018, carried out by the European Environmental Bureau the study looked at global recycling rates. The reason this examination is so interesting is that the team undertaking the study first took the previous figures on general recycling across those nations and updated them. They then went into greater detail, looking into elements like recycling contamination, inclusion of construction and demolition waste recycling, processing losses and various other areas of the industry itself. The results? Well, the top five nations in ascending order were Switzerland, Wales, South Korea, Austria and Germany, who came in first place. Most comprehensive, Amanda. Well done. Uh, I know that the mighty Simon has comprehensive recycling facilities over at Yum Restaurant. These feature heavily in our adventure game, I believe. Yes, Professor, they do. Remember that they also feature prominently in Primasia, the prologue too. I hope our viewers will head over and check that out in good time before we release Chapter 1. I'm so glad that I entered that recycling competition. So are we, Amanda. You have a couple of other tips for us, I think. Yes, I do, Professor. I wanted to show you a couple of ideas that children can make with the help of a responsible adult from everyday items that cannot be recycled through the normal process. Here, we can see someone that has cleverly cut toothpaste tubes open and then, after careful cleaning, stuck them together, making a fantastic toothbrush holder. This wonderful picture was created using bottle tops as fish. These little guys would look great in your study, Professor. Marvellous! Thank you very much. Uh, Catch you soon. Carry on the good work. Goodbye, Professor. See you. This week's word of interest is ambiguous. Open 
to more than one interpretation, not having one obvious meaning. Recycling symbols are the best example of something that must not be ambiguous, that is for sure. Thank you for joining me, Professor Patrick Prawn, with this week's Primate News. Now, where is that invitation to join a video conference on pandemics? I really must hook up with my old chum, Martin Mammoth, over on Isica. It would be super if we could get him over here permanently. Oh, I miss our virtual chess games too. It was fabulous getting the primate gang to move the chess pieces around for us over in their campus. 